In today's video, a cat sits on a chair, some fish swim through plants, and a special guest joins my channel. Hello everyone, this is Paul the Inventory King. Hope you guys are all having an awesome day and enjoying your fish. So today, I have a special guest joining me on the channel to talk about regrets. I would say most of us have regrets on certain things in the hobby, and my special guest today is gonna to talk about his. So make sure that you guys check the link in the description down below after to subscribe to his channel. So, take it away. What's going on guys, I'm your not so upbeat host for the days. I've just come in from work. It's been a killer shift and not for the first time ever. We've got a long day of maintenance ahead on the three tanks that I've got in the office slash fish room. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the things that I regret most in the hobby, including some of these. So one of the things I regret doing in the hobby, definitely buying the amount of tanks that I have without having much of a plan, meaning I've got to do these tanks with buckets, which definitely isn't ideal. So for the 20 gallon grout that I've currently got going on, the 55 African cichlid tank, and then my little 10 gallon planter tank, Perry, move. I've got to use buckets. That's because we're in a rented apartment right now and uh, I can't hook up any python or anything else to the sink, so buckets it is. And that is a real pain, but once you're done with the water changes and your tanks look like this, and like this, kind of puts you in a better mood. Especially when this is your first ever escaped planter tank and it looks like this and I'm really buzzing off this tank right now, but then the issue comes back of you buying too many tanks and you're not knowing where to put them so you end up putting them in a stand next to your canister filter and below the 55 gallon and then it just becomes an absolute pain to do water changes. So that for me right, oh there's a cat. Hey Kelly. So that for me right now is the biggest pain in the ass. Another regret of mine in the fish hobby is not using Seek em Safe sooner. I used to use Prime, I believe, and a bunch of others, but this thing just saves me a bunch of money each and every month, or in fact, I've had this for about nine months now, I'm gonna say, and I'm not even halfway through the bottle. So if you're not using this, Seek em Safe, make sure you use it. It's a no-brainer price-wise. What is she doing? Another issue is not having enough space to house all the tanks and fish that I want to keep. So these right here are all blue neon fry that I actually bred myself. There's some bigger ones, and that's a new little dude that I just recently purchased. But, I mean, when you're addicted to the hobby and you're addicted to fish, it's kind of just not enough space in one room for tanks, and right now, this is my only room, so it's kind of a killer. And that's a massive frustration for a lot of people in the hobby, so I've already told the wife, once we get a house and we move out of this apartment, which hopefully is in the next year, I'm having a basement fish room. Best believe it. Another massive issue for me and a lot of other fish keeper is knowing what to do with the tanks that you have. For me, I'm always changing my mind, whether it's breathing the blue neon that's now in the 55 and the vast majority of these guys are making a breeding group in the 55 or making trying to make a blue neon colony has been my latest thought so that would mean selling the majority of the fish that I've currently got in there and doing all that jazz so who knows you just go through things and thoughts and other little nags time and time and time again and you never end up making a decision six months down the line you're still trying to sell the fish on Craigslist and no one's bitten. So you're stuck with fish and things that you don't necessarily want, but we're selling those soon to the local fish store and then we're trying to figure out what to do with a 55 and what we're gonna do. I'm kind of leaning right now toward a 
blue neon colony in there with a lot of these grow outs and a lot of those dudes in there but that would mean giving up on a lot of my other really really cool fish like this absolutely balling out Taiwan reef that sunshine that I've had from really young if you turn around you can see the his fins oh beautiful but yeah and I also like this albino I've got a young star sapphire in there as well so I don't want to give up on those guys but then again I kind of want to do what I want to do and move on from this kind of thing but a lot of the time though that's tough as I'm sure you all know and you just never really know what to do so if you do end up popping over to my channel after watching this video please let me know in the comments what you think I should do I'm leaning towards a blue neon group and just kind of going from there but as I said that would mean selling some of the absolute stud muffins that I've got Ooh, fights going on another thing I hate about my fish hobby is going to the local fish store and always coming back with a fish. It's a problem. And that's exactly what happened with this guy who is a ruby crystal peacock. Obviously he's a hybrid, but he's an absolute stunner for the size of him. And when you see fish like that, you just can't help but pick them up. And then you've got to add them into your plans just cause you know, you ain't got enough going on. So another thing I regret doing in the hobby, which was actually the first thing I ever did in the hobby was getting my first tank at PetSmart. And at the time I didn't know any better. It was my girlfriend that's now my wife back in college. She wanted a fish tank. And when we were told to set up the tank by one of the employees, it was, oh, this is simple. You throw a bit of water in there, throw a bit of conditioner in, and you can add your fish right away. And obviously now I know that's not the case, but back then I didn't have the foggiest idea. And the rainbow shark were the only one that actually survived. And some of the fish that we actually had in there were just a compatibility disaster. I mean, African dwarf frogs, the rainbow shark, some guppies, some mollies. I think we had a Texas cichlid that was <laughs> tiny at the time. I mean, it was an absolute nightmare. Um, but that's what's actually got me into the hobby. And due to the fish dying and stuff like that, I started to research and watch YouTube and all that good stuff and that kind of led me here today. So without that PetSmart employee that was absolutely clueless, I probably wouldn't have been in the hobby today. So kind of a tongue in cheek, thank you. Anyway, guys, I'll sign off with a little view of the 55. Hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please feel free to come over to my channel. I'm close to a thousand subscribers. I'd love to get there this week. And if you do happen to come over, please let me know what you do with this 55 gallon blue neon colony or keep it as it is. Thanks to Paul for giving me the spot on his channel. I've really enjoyed working with you fella. Hopefully we'll get to do it again sometime soon. And to all of you guys for tuning in, thanks for watching. I want to say a huge thank you to Cichlidscape for joining me on this video today. Thank you, man, for sharing uh, your regrets. And uh, sorry, guys, I got allergies. Uh, but thanks again for sharing your uh, regrets in the hobby. And again, everybody, in the description's a link to his channel. Make sure you guys hit them up and sub them up get them up there and uh, also leave us comments down below what do you guys uh, think what regrets do you have um, what regrets uh, have you improved upon let us know so comment like subscribe hit the bell notification stay tanked